So we will talk about the annual rep uh, reporting, like what is what is this and what issues we face there. And we will uh, highlight the data-driven approach that is actually the solution to our problems. And we will tell you about the architecture of the application. And then we will di deep dive into the sentiment and readability analysis. And then we will close off with some future work to be done to this tool. So we will switch now to the dialogue modes. <laughs> hey, Eltjona. <laughs> Huh. Thanks for having me. I really need your help because I'm an auditor and I need to report uh, or review many reports in a very little time. An annual report is actually like a comprehensive overview of the performance of a company, which should give a meaningful and balanced overview of what the company has achieved in a year. And I'm the one that should check that. And this is a very manual, arbitrary task at the moment because I don't have any tool to help me. I just need to read through this report myself. And this is really time consuming. Yeah, and you have different version, I guess, all the time. I have different versions all the time. It's not that there's one annual report to review, but the yeah, a report has a moving target, which is also one of the bottlenecks. So actually, we do not know where we go, but we know that we want to achieve the best results. So over and over we try to improve versions of this report until we think it's ready for sign off and uh, yeah another bottleneck that i face is that it becomes available to me very late in the process which gives me very little time to meet the deadline and uh, the report is well here it says over 80 pages well actually the average annual report is currently i think over 100 pages so you can imagine that my my smart brain, which is like not lacking, <laughs> has difficulties with reading through all those pages in one night and then also think yeah, and say something about this. Sure. We are uh, currently building a tool basically with off-the-shelf libraries and we tested quite a few that are already there. Uh, many sentiment analysis and readability, which I think this can provide you a little bit more information about what you currently have. Uh, it can be quite helpful, but we also need your help during the process. Since we are trying to build our own, uh, mo to train our own model, we don't have enough data set because annual reporting, it's already, that it's already being published, they are already corrected and they are already a little bit ne neutral. So during this process of you analyzing annual report through our tool, we actually need your feedback as well to improve our model. Uh, but we're going through a data-driven approach. So if we switch to yes. uh, our own logic of uh, or how we come up with this tool, basically, is that we want to build a culture that acts upon data. So the entire idea is that the business has so much information all the time that they are, uh, they are being uh, fed with a lot of PDF reports and all this information is not being used currently. But this can be very helpful for us and also for you to actually ease a little bit all the job that you guys are doing and make your working hours less. That sounds not, good. Not get you out of the job, but... <laughs> yes, because actually I just need something that uh, takes out the subjectivity of our analysis because currently we are with a lot of consultants all reading these reports and giving our opinion and feedback to the clients. Yeah. But yeah, we, we would like a tool to help us to make it less subjective. And maybe that is something that your tool can help with as well. Yes. So let me guide you a little bit through sentiment analysis. I guess uh, you guys already know what it is about. So differently known as an opinion mining is basically an automated process of understanding an opinion. Uh, it can be considered, so how we approach this issue uh, is that it, we try to model it as a classification problem. So you have the subjectivity classification and the polarity classification. The subjectivity, I guess everybody knows, is like if an opinion is based on facts or not, and according to all the data that we have, uh, I think that we can actually reach that. Uh, and polarity, so polarity is about how positive or negative it is. Uh, but how this will help us is that based on some research papers that we actually read at the beginning, uh, there were like 60 to 65% of the time where uh, judging a sentiment on a particular piece, uh, 60 to 65 people uh, would basically agree upon the same thing. We had a lot of test cases in previous presentations as well when we saw that not the entire room was 100% sure on the uh, value of the sentiment of, of, of a sentence. Also, using a centralized sentiment analysis system will help us not only in Netherlands, but also through our entire company to actually analyze better all the reports. Well, that sounds promising. 
Yeah, let me, as a software developer that I am, I really like to build uh, applications that are reliable, fast, and very, um, uh, well, error prone, basically. So I will guide you a little bit on the architecture of the application that we built, and uh, after that, we're gonna go in the juicy part of readability and uh, sentiment analysis. Uh, basically, our application right now, it's hosted in Azure. Um, we have a dashboard application, which basically uh, shows all the information that we have. We are using Service Bus, uh, and we have an analyzer app. The analyzer app is basically our core uh, application which analyzes all the information. You can trigger different analysis and since we didn't have a lot of information according to all what we wanted to achieve like sentiment, readability or complexity, uh, we tried to build the plug and play architecture and this is why we have the analyzer app. So we want to test different uh, analysis basically and since the business rules they are changing constantly and maybe we can add more then we wanted to have something that would allow us to actually increase the number of analyses that we want to apply in a report well good thanks and uh, yeah let, let's talk about what text and text analytics actually is so this is a high overview of what we did and it's currently working and it's already uh, being used by our internal users mostly uh, so text analytics is just a big data dashboard, but uh, not with uh, 400 charts or anything like that. Uh, we try to make it, uh, we try to improve a little bit the UX. You're gonna see a lot of, um, I'm gonna show a little bit uh, screenshots because we weren't allowed to actually uh, show it live. Uh, it shows the sentiment analysis, subjectivity, readability score, and also word cloud, which was like something added at the last minute. Uh, but this is based on off the shelf libraries. So if I want to go through the sentiment and readability now, li the libraries that we are using and what we actually tested to achieve this. Um, well, it's not going it's gonna be a little bit technical, but I think it's gonna be useful, especially uh, also for the business. It would be, it was very helpful to explain to the clients what we're actually doing. Um, the sentiment analysis, we started with the simple off the shelf because we didn't, as I said, we were software developers and our data scientists were, is, uh, are coming later in the scene. Uh, we started with NLTK Vader and uh, text blob. We compared those two more or less. Um, we went through the entire, uh, in a small database, not a very big one. So the NLTK Vader was performing faster than actually uh, text blob, but well, we put all the data and we got the information, we saw that text block was more accurate on positive comments. So I know that both of them, they are trained on social media uh, posts, but uh, in this case, in our uh, report uh, part, we saw that also a lot of reports at the beginning when they were uploaded by the clients, there were a lot of positive reaction about their uh, outcome. And we wanted to reduce that. So we wanted a little bit, a little bit more neutral and text block was actually performing quite good. Um, but we wanted the business help in this case. So what we uh, actually did in our platform is that we allowed all our um, internal users to say if there is a possible, uh, if it is positive or if it is a negative sentence based on what we were providing them. So we were already analyzing with text blob. They were already going through all the information that they were seeing and uh, they were just agreeing or not if that information is correct. So if they would see, for example, something, a sentence that was provided by text blob that was actually positive, they would say like, this is not correct, this is negative, this, we would save that information. And in this case, we actually built our uh, own uh, data set, text data set. We are trying to switch now to Spacey because uh, now all our data scientists are involved and uh, we, have, we are building a nice uh, data. Um, all the information is already saved and we are tagged all the data, more or less. It's still ongoing. Uh, why we changed to Spacey? This was a very, well, it wasn't an easy choice, but also wasn't a hard choice. We searched about Spacey and NLTK because we were doubting between those two. 
Uh, but since we are having a really, we have really nice data scientists and they are working to train their own uh, models, uh, they have different approaches upon that. So in case for us to test our models, but also to see which one were more relevant, we wanted someone like, it's not kind of a framework, but an uh, NLP library to actually help us to test those models. Uh, and uh, Spacey has a real nice uh, architecture behind it. So uh, it allows you to actually attach a lot of attributes and properties and methods to the doc uh, objects and token. Uh, it has an object-oriented approach, which we love very much, uh, because it actually gets your text and then it analyzes it, and then it provides you with a doc object. And if you see over there in the entire um, in the graph over there, so it tokenizes it, then it tags, it parses, and then um, it actually provides you a lot of information right now. We actually did a test between Spacey tagging and Google tagging that I'll show you in a bit, but first, uh, let me show you that uh, how, we, how easy it is to actually add attributes or properties in a doc object in uh, Spacey. And uh, this is just a simple one, like the simplest version ever in IPython, um, that allows you to actually add all the possible functions uh, as a sentimenter, or you can name them, whatever you want, but it adds it as an extension. Uh, also, it allows us to have a really good connection with uh, TensorFlow as well, and also to test it with different models that our data scientists uh, are already training. Uh, if over here, we have basically a test that uh, we did with Google NLP, which is already available online, and with Spacey tagging. And with Spacey version 2, this has improved a lot because they're already working with neural network. And, uh, well, if you see over here in the green one, it's Alexa, which is a product according to Spacey. And uh, in the part over here, which uh, is the Google NLP, it uh, ran it renders Alexa as a person. So this was uh, not the kind of uh, tagging that we actually wanted. So that's why Spacey was way better because actually it compares to the, to the word that actually Alexa has close by. And um, well, this is about sentiment so far. Let's switch to, uh, Mike. Let's switch to readability. So about the readability analysis, this was another of the GRE um, conditions. Yeah. It's one of the standards that we use to audit the annual reports, which requests for the readability assessment. So that is why we asked an analysis for that as well, of course. Yes, and this was this went through a lot of research as well. Uh, we finished after we did some of our testing through some of the annual reports, which I think you can see the names in the graph over there. So Greenpeace, Volkswagen, PwC, uh, Facebook. Uh, we saw that actually uh, Fog was performing a little bit better. We also tested this with uh, some of the user. Oh, yeah, sure. Sorry. Uh, some of the users. Uh, so basically we told our... Uh, um, co-workers and people that we know to actually read them and more or less give us an idea how difficult it was for them to actually to read and go through these reports. Uh, we decided about the Gun and Fog Index. You can see the formula there. It's not a hard formula and we already had all the data to actually calculate it. Uh, we don't do readability tests for Dutch languages yet, but that is something that is going to come in the future. Great. Well, thank you for explaining all these analysis to us and to me. I'm really happy that this is possible. And I also told you in the beginning that we need like those different versions. So would it be possible to include it in the tool that we could see differences between the first, the second and so on versions of the annual report so that we are able to track like the differences and if the, import, yeah, the reports actually improved in quality. So. As we said, this is an application and we allow our clients to log in and we allow our internal users to log in and then can upload the, not the final version of the PDF report yet. Um, the historic view is one of the additions that we had recently and well, it required a little bit of work because we built our own algorithm, 
it's a really rule, a simple rule-based algorithm to see if there are like two paragraphs uh, that two paragraphs are similar to each other or not or if there was a new edit paragraph or a sentence so basically it's to define what is different between two PDF reports and uh, this resulted pretty good actually because we tested it with multiple res uh, with multiple um, report so far and uh, I guess that uh, it was uh, that you could actually see the difference and you could actually see if there was like a new report added or a new paragraph added or new sentences uh, and if there were like an editing between those two and I guess this helped your job as well yes great um, well actually I would like to see some examples of how how this tool would display the results of the analysis to me because currently I do not really have the idea of how this would translate into a tool because it's all a very nice story but of course how does it look like in reality yes so the application the part that uh, we spend some time on making it easy for people to understand if you see over here there is a graph of sentiment analysis which um, well, we get the PDF and we're using PDF to tree to actually separate it in paragraphs and in titles and in chapters. Uh, so we, you can, here you can see basically all the chapters and of the PDF, it's way longer than this because the reports are more than 100 pages sometimes. But uh, you can actually see the current, uh, the comparison between the current version and the previous version. And right now in this example, it's not there, but if there is a new paragraph added, then you could see only the current version uh, the current value of that paragraph or of that chapter. It looks a little bit weird because I have erased some of the names of the client that we tested this upon, but uh, you get the idea. Um, also, you have the filtering. The filtering would help you to actually get the sentiment values on the paragraph, also on the sentence. And this is the part that we actually needed the help of business. Uh, they were actually giving us a lot of data and marking if that information was correct or not. And that's how we're actually building our own uh, labeled database. Um, if you go, this goes for the sentiment analysis, also for the readability. So in the readability uh, graph, we actually showed through the Gunning Fog Index, we also explain it for the users because this platform is being used by our internal users, but also by clients. Currently, um, well, the one thing that I forgot to mention is that the analy analysis happens on fly. So in the moment that you upload the report, we start, we trigger our task, and then you could actually see uh, the readability score, the sentiment, and everything uh, subjectivity uh, while uh, it's being um, calculated. So we update it constantly. Uh, right now, for nearly like an 80 pages report with uh, using text blob, uh, for the moment, uh, it's not. It's taking around five minutes or so, which is like pretty good, uh, and it helps the user to the users, our internal uh, users, but also the client to actually see the information right away. Uh, this is the readability. As I said, we explain what we are using and how we are using it. Uh, also, the subjectivity uh, is more or less the same. Yeah, so that would be the next, it's similar to the uh, sentiment analysis. So it also works with chapters and you can click through because the highest scores are of course the most interesting to view because you want to know like the most objective paragraphs of the text and see whether that's actually the right thing to do or whether that should be more objectively formulated. So then you would go into the chapter and then in the chapter you see there are different paragraphs and like the top three are the ones which have like the highest subjectivity score so we could zoom in on those paragraphs and actually read what's in there and then see if the subjectivity is correctly used or not because sometimes you really have a fact-based text but you could also have for instance like a very objective display of results and then you do not want to have so much uh, yeah subjectivity in it because then the client could really steer the minds of the users of the annual report but then that's not yeah according to the standards so um yeah let's see what's our next slide oh the, the surprise the, <laughs> the surprise the surprise analysis this was like a present that we had from experience center <laughs> in our analysis uh, it's just a simple word cloud which basically shows uh the most common used in uh 
Well, I've erased the last one. I hope you don't understand the client, but <laughs> uh, well, it's more or, le more or less like all the uh, words that are being used mostly. Uh, for the moment, we also remove the text, so it's just a lorem ipsum one because it explains like how often the words are and uh, also mainly like where can you find them in the text. So this is this was for showcase purposes. Well, great. Thanks a lot for the presentation of all the analysis. Um, of course, there's always room for further development. So we just wanted to guide you through what we will uh, do to improve this tool even further. Yes. Um, yeah, so the first thing that I was thinking of was that I actually would also th uh, think it's interesting for the client to see how they perform compared to their competitors. So it would be nice if in the future we could build in an option uh, that this is possible. Do you think this might work? Yes, actually, we are currently working on that, but uh, yeah, it's still on the, under progress. Okay, well, and let's, uh, let's see how that works out. Yeah. <laughs> also, the part of uh, we wanted to improve uh, our library to extract from PDFs uh, to get information from pictures as well, because uh, sometimes they include a lot of pictures with a lot of information in these annual reports. Yep. And uh, we actually want to have the data as well to analyze it. Uh, we want. We are currently training our models, uh, and we want to test it by uh, attaching it as a property to spacey uh, objects. But uh, yeah, we are uh, we are still uh, under progress on that. We'll keep you updated. Thanks. Yeah, and then the final uh, present that you received from you, the word cloud, was a great surprise. But we think we could use something more specific because currently, uh, yeah. Okay, five minutes. Thanks. Oh, 10. Okay, great. Uh, we have uh, the words that prevail the most in the annual report, but it would be even more um, interesting to see which topics re reveal the most, because um, companies are reporting on material topics that they identify in their materiality matrix, and uh, of course it would be weird if there are other topics prevailing more in the annual report than the topics that they should report on based on their materiality matrix. So we thought uh, we heard something about topic modeling. Maybe most of you already know exactly what this is, but this is quite uh, new to me. And I hope that Elchona could help me with building this into the tool as well, so that we could really verify whether the topics that are material to the company are the ones that are highlighted in the report the most. Yes, this is something that we are actually thinking on. Uh, and we are working up on it, but as I said, our models are into training because we just uh, we are just for the moment labeling our database, and the business is helping with that. So uh, these are like future work that we want to do with the application itself. But uh, right now, I guess it's quite uh, nice and successful with the information that we got so far, and I guess helpful. Thank you. Yeah, it really is. And thank you all for listening to us. Thank you.